Sometimes I think I'm cursed because of something that happened before I was even born. See, a long time ago, there was this family. The papa, he was a musician. He and his family would sing and dance and count their blessings. But he also had a dream to play for the world. And one day, he left with his guitar and never returned. And the mama, she didn't have time to cry over that walk away musician. She rolled up her sleeves and she learned to make shoes. She could have made candy or, or fireworks or sparkly underwear for wrestlers, but no, she chose shoes. Uh, yeah, what's up guys? Today we are learning English with a beautiful Disney Pixar film, Coco. So this film shows a very interesting Mexican tradition called the Day of the Dead. Now Mexican culture is very present in the United States because they're our neighbor to the south and also because there has been a lot of immigration from Mexico. Now we first will look at a funny clip from the movie which is full of fantastic vocabulary and phrasal verbs and then we'll also take a look at one of the songs. So finally, this film also includes a lot of Spanish words which we'll show the English translation for in green. Let's jump in. Mira, mira, they're setting up for tonight. The music competition for Dia de Muertos. Hero, you should sign up. Uh-uh, my family would freak. Come on, what did De La Cruz always say? Seize your moment? Show me what you got, muchacho. I'll be your first audience. Miguel! <gasps> ah! Abuelita! What are you doing here? Um, uh... You leave my ah! son alone. Doña, please. I was just getting a shine. I know your tricks, Mariachi. What did he say to you? He was just showing me his guitar. <gasps> you shame on my grandson. Oh, sweet little angelito querido cielito. You keep away from him. All right, so in just a moment, we are going to learn all of the most important vocabulary, phrasal verbs, and even pronunciation from that clip. But first, I wanted to quickly let you know that if you are new here, every single week we make fun lessons just like this one so that you can learn to understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like our fan Nikki, who says that she was bored all of her life learning with traditional methods, and now it's fun for her learning with our channel. And if you want to have a ton of fun and learn lots too, it's really simple. You can join over 3 million learners from around the world by hitting that subscribe button and the bell down below, and you won't miss a single one of our new lessons. Mira, mira, they're setting up for tonight. In cases like this one, the phrasal verb set up is used to say to prepare. In other words, he's saying that they are working to have everything ready for that night's celebration. Dia de los Muertos has begun. There's some rumor floating around that some hotshot piston cup race car is setting up his big racing headquarters here. Really? Yeah, wow, well, there goes the town. You want to be like your hero? You should sign up. Uh -uh. To sign up is to enroll yourself in a certain activity in order to participate in it. Miguel would love to sign up and participate in the talent show, but let's see how his family reacts to that. Well, what about tonight? What's tonight? Well, they're having this talent show, and I thought I might sign up. Well, maybe. <laughs> you have to have talent to be in a talent show. What are you going to do, shine shoes? <laughs> As we saw in the beginning of this lesson, Miguel's family hates music and by no means will let him participate. You should sign up. Uh uh, my family would freak. To freak or freak out is to panic or have a strong emotional reaction to something. Let's look at some more examples of this word. So, you're being strangely cryptic as you wrap your magic hair around my injured hand? Ah, sorry. Just don't 
Don't freak out. Come on, what did De La Cruz always say? Seize your moment? The phrase, seize your moment, is used to encourage people to live their life to its full potential. In other words, in some way this means enjoy life while you can. As this was the catchphrase of Miguel's hero, the musician Ernesto de la Cruz, we can see this phrase repeated a few times in this movie. Don't ask permission. When you see your moment, you mustn't let it pass you by. You must seize it. Señor de la Cruz, what did it take for you to seize your moment? I had to have faith in my dream. No one was going to hand it to me. It was up to me to reach for that dream, grab it tight, and make it come true. No more hiding, Dante. I gotta seize my moment. I'm gonna play in Mariachi Plaza if it kills me. Show me what you got, muchacho. The phrase, show me what you got, is commonly used to ask someone to show you their talents or abilities. All right, Dusty. Remember this. It ain't how fast you fly. It's how you fly fast. Roger that. Show me what you got. Watch this. Oh, yeah. Great. You can go up and down. What else? Show me your turn. Here we go. Do you know which of these phrases has the same meaning? Do your tricks. Show me what you are made of. Show me what you have. That's right. Now let's hear this phrase again and pay special attention to the way that he pronounces these words. Show me what you got, muchacho. Here, we have an interesting example of connected speech, which is the way that natives connect and link their words together. When words that end with a T sound are followed by words that end with a Y sound, they merge into a CH sound. So he doesn't say, what you, he says, what you. Let's hear it again, fast and slow. Show me what you got, muchacho. Show me what you got, muchacho. Then, the final T in the word got is a glottal T. That means that it is cut off at the back of the throat. So instead of saying got, we say it like got. Altogether, show me what you got. Now, a lot of learners tell me that they can't understand natives because we speak too fast. But did you know this isn't actually the real problem? The real issue is that we cut and connect our words together like you've just seen here. But you can learn this and be able to understand natives at any speed. And we have a free three-part masterclass that will help you a lot in being able to do it. So if you want to try that absolutely free, you can click up here or down the description below to learn more. I'll be your first audience. An audience is the group of people that gets together in one place to see someone perform. As Miguel never played his music in public, this musician would be his first audience. Note that this word is actually used to refer to a group of people and not really to an individual person. Yeah, please! I was just getting a shine! I know your tricks, Mariachi! As we can see in this scene, the musician is paying Miguel to polish his shoes. If you ever polished your shoes, you probably know that they end up being very shiny. For this reason, we can also call this a shoe shine, and Miguel is a shoe shiner. The mariachi reduces it by just saying shine. Please, I was just getting a shine. I know your tricks, mariachi. Tricks are actions that intend to deceive someone. For example, if I say, you tricked me, which of these words could work as a synonym? That's right, by saying that she knows his tricks, she is saying that she doesn't believe that he was just getting a shine. By the way, did you notice how she called him? I know your tricks, Mariachi. So, Mariachi is not his name. A Mariachi is a typical musician from Mexico who wears these traditional clothes and plays traditional music. What did he say to you? He was just showing me his guitar. <gasps> Shame on you. Shame on you is a good phrase to use when you want to tell someone off as it is a way of saying that he or she should feel ashamed because of their acts. I I'm not from the candy tree department. Lying to a child. Shame on you, Ralph. But I wasn't lying about the medal. That is my medal. Uh, what big teeth you have. <laughs> Shame on you, Maurice. Can you not see that you have insulted the freak? Uh -huh. You must tell me. Who the heck are you? No part of your music, Mariachi. You keep away from him.
If someone tells you to keep away from someone or something, that person means that you should avoid that person as they seem unpleasant, dangerous, or likely to cause problems. Example, keep the baby away from the kitchen. Both nodding and yesing have similar meanings as they are used to express agreement. When you nod, you move your head up and down several times to show approval. Yesing is a slang word that is used to say that someone agrees. If you say that you have been blessed or have a blessing, you mean that you feel lucky to have something such as health, love, or in this case, a bit of craziness. Now, the expression, to count one's blessings, means to be grateful for what one has. Often, we will use it to tell someone that they should be grateful. Come on! You could at least give them a chance. Oh, to do what? Sharpen their pitchforks? No! They just want to give you their blessing. Oh, great. Now I need their blessing? Well, if you want to be a part of this family, yes. Hey, if you're enjoying this lesson, then I bet you will absolutely adore this other lesson we made with the Pixar classic, Up. You can find that by clicking up here or down in the description below after you finish this lesson. Here, we have another good example of connected speech. Let's listen to this verse again and pay special attention to the way that he pronounces the words that and I. If you watch our videos often, you probably know that when you have a T sound between two vowel sounds in American English, it often morphs to a D sound. This is often called an American T, and it is heard in instances like better, cat and dog, it is. Notice it doesn't have to be in the same word, as long as the T is surrounded by vowel sounds. So he doesn't say that I, he says that I. Let's listen to it again fast and slow and look at a couple more examples of this type of sound morphing. This phrase is quite common and is used to say that you are good at something. So by saying this, he means that Miguel is actually a really good musician. The phrase to take liberties is used when someone feels very comfortable with a situation or thing and acts in a way that could be considered too free. Example, I took some liberties when writing the essay and didn't follow the professor's rules. We can also say to take the liberty to do something. This means that we do something without asking for permission. Example, I took the liberty of ordering a drink for you while you were in the bathroom. Mira, mira, they're setting up for tonight. The music competition for Dia de Muertos. You want to be like your hero? You should sign up. Uh-uh. My family would freak. Come on, what did De La Cruz always say? Seize your moment? first audience. Miguel! <gasps> Abuelita! What are you doing here? Uh, you leave my uh, hands 
Susan alone. Doña, please. I was just getting a shine. I know your tricks, Mariachi. What did he say to you? He was just showing me his guitar. <gasps> Shame on you. Hey. My grandson is a sweet little angelito querido cielito. You keep away from him. You make me un poco loco, un poquitito loco. The way you keep me guessing, I'm not in there. I'm It's just too poco crazy in the sense that you're not making The liberties you're taking is my God is a shaking You are just too poco loco, loco.